Okay, today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a hemp bracelet with colored hemp. We're gonna use skulls, and I might throw a shell in there, I may or may not. I might just put three skulls. I got two red, one orange, and then I've got our uh, our ball for the for the latch. So let's get started. I'm gonna use the multicolored green and pink. So you're gonna wanna take a piece, you're gonna wanna cut it, you're gonna wanna fold it in half to where it's about the size of your wrist. You're gonna wanna fold it in half. And sometimes it's good to wet it especially with this kind because a lot of times it comes very thin stiff I guess you'd say so you you fold it in half like that and you cut it you're gonna want it to be a little longer than the size of your wrist that way you got some slack to play with at the end now I usually just take some spit or you can keep a thing of water with you. It don't really matter, honestly. Um, you take and you get it wet so you can work with it. And then, you know, you make sure it's, it's obviously the size of my wrist. Over time, you won't even have to do this. You'll just learn that it's better to just have some slack in it honestly so you take you got that piece now these next pieces you're gonna want to be about three to four times the size of that when you're working with the colored hemp I mean it's all a matter of preference you know some people have the money to spend on more of it some people don't um, but you're going to want to make it about three to four times the length because if you run out, then you run into problems. I mean, it can be fixed, but it's very, very difficult. But anyway, cut that piece. Then you're going to want to take another piece and do it the same exact way. You're going to make it the same length and all. So, you get that piece cut. You're going to also want to wet those. Definitely got to wet it. Now, with the plain hemp, you don't really have to wet it because it's usually pretty good already. So, take, you fold those in half, you want, you're going to want to make sure they're all even at the ends. And just kind of even up the ends, get them all at the same spot. I know this may be a little confusing. Um, so... Keep them folded in half, of course. And then you can take your smaller piece that you just had. You're going to also put it on there. So, there's what we're working with to begin with. You just start on that and now you're going to take and tie a knot in it 
and you're not going to want this knot to be any wider or any smaller than your bead. So, tie your knot, just a normal knot. You know, nothing special about it. And once you get it kind of tied, then you take your take your bead you're gonna be latching it with, pull it up tight to that. And you're gonna want it to be very tight that way your bracelet don't slide off your arm. Or that way it don't come open, you know. So that looks good to me. So, once you're done with that part, you should be working with something that looks, and I'll show you in a minute, I'm trying to get it where you'll be able to see it real good. So you get your two smaller pieces in the middle, of course. And at that point, it should look a little something like this. Just like that. That's what we're working with. Your middle pieces are there. Those are the two shortest. And then these two on the sides are your longer pieces. So now, you take, you're going to make a loop just like that. And then you're going to bring the other one in front, behind, and through. Pull it tight. Now getting it started can sometimes be a little tricky. Now this is the flat braid we're doing today. They have the flat braid and the spiral braid and there's other little fancy kinds of braids you can do, but today we're just going to keep it simple with the flat braid. So, you do that, and then this next one, you're going to do it the opposite. You make your loop in front, behind, and through the back once again. Pull that tight. So, there's that. There's how you're going to want to start that up. So you just continue the cycle. Except each time you got to do it opposite. Opposite sides. If, you, if you're wanting to make a spiral, you just keep doing the same braid through and through. All the way through. But... That's for a different time. I'll show you guys how to make a spiral one on the next video or whenever. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to see, if it's in my power, if I can do it, I'll do it. You just got to let me know. Drop a comment. Um, any subscriptions, likes, shares, those are always appreciated. Now... If you're doing this for someone else, making it for someone else, um, depending on how well you know them, you would want to just kind of, you know, see about what size you would wear and then say they're bigger or smaller than you, just make it a little bigger or a little smaller. Um, where you put the beads are completely up to you. Usually I just do it standard, just like the uh, shell bracelets. I just kind of braided a little, put one, braided a little more. Now with smaller beads like these, 
you know, you can put a little more space between the braids. But you just continue. You see how I'm doing that? You just make a loop. I'll show you another time in depth. You take it. You make a loop just like that in front of the middle piece. You take this piece, go in front of that, in front of that one, and then behind and through the back. And then pull it. Some people have a tough time learning it, some people don't. That's why I'm making a video, because to me a video is a lot easier than reading instructions. Now, you take, once again, you make a loop on the other side, since we're doing a flat braid. Go in front, behind, and through the back. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. They make great gifts for anyone. Um, wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, brothers, sisters, anybody. I mean, anybody that wears jewelry. Now some people may, um, some people may not like hemp jewelry, but that's the cool thing about these colored ones is that... You know, say somebody don't really like the look of the raw, you know, regular hemp. You can just make them a color one, you know, make one their, their favorite color. And, uh, you know, should be good, should be in the clear. <laughs> um, but you just continue that cycle. Loop it in the front and then in front, behind, and through the back and then pull and then other side in front and then in front behind through the back now we're gonna think we might go ahead and add a bead let's see eh we'll do a couple more braids before we put the beads on because you don't want to be want them to be too close to the bottom because that can make it a little uncomfortable being that you're already going to have a bead on the bottom that you have to strap it with but yeah when I first started doing this we had to go off instructions usually um, they come with a kit some of them come with a kit especially the shell ones um, this isn't the original one that I made but I have it actually I believe this is it this is my old one. You can see how floppy and flimsy it is. Um, that was my first one. And I had to read the instructions just to make it. At first, I just I didn't understand because it was just pictures. It was pictures of how to do this. And I was like, well, um, <laughs> you know, how do I do this? But I, I worked with it and I figured it out. You know, it, just like anything, it takes time. You know, anything takes time to learn. Anything worth learning takes time, you know. So, you know, but uh, I figured I'd make videos on it. You know, make it a little easier for those people who would rather just watch a video. Because if you're anything like me, you'd probably rather just watch a video. And this stuff, you can kind of make it stretch, pull on it a little. You know, but you also want it to be kind of tight, too. That way it, it's not so flimsy. Some people want theirs flimsy. Anyway, so we're going to put on our first bead. Right here I have a red skull. Now sometimes both of the middle pieces will fit through. Sometimes they won't. It just depends on the bead. It looks like this one might. Sometimes you got to twist it a little to actually get it on there. Now, well... Now it's looking like it won't, but anyway, that's okay. Easy fix. You just put a single piece of the middle through there. And you take it and you just put the 
other middle piece around it just however you see that see what I did I've got the skull on there and the other middle piece I just put around it and you hold it tight right there and you just continue your braid on around as you see this is very simple very easy I mean just about anybody can do it you know, if you can't do it don't feel bad about yourself not a, you know it's not everybody's calling I mean everybody has something they're good at something they're not you know it's all about just having fun and enjoying what you do uh, I enjoy making jewelry uh, I also make music I make horrorcore underground rap um, I mostly just do that for fun you know it's it's kind of something I do but what I really enjoy doing is making jewelry making I sew a little I'm not an expert at sewing I most of the sewing I do is by hand. I own a sewing machine, but I haven't quite learned how to use it yet. Um, you know. So, regardless of what you're doing, you can always compare it to another piece. So, this one looks like it's about time for another bead. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and put another braid. And then I'll throw another bead on there. And you can do these completely however you want. I mean, it's it's completely a choice thing. Um, now today I have an orange and two reds. So that's obviously what I'm going with. Uh, I'm going to take, put that through there. And same scenario put it through the the first one through it and then put the other one around it and then continue your braid continue it on around there and tighten it up i've noticed with these skulls they're a lot easier to work with the shells are very difficult because they're they're an odd shape they don't hardly want to straighten up whenever you're when you're braiding around them they never want to straighten up so it, it makes it rather difficult to do but you know not impossible so i've got the skull on there continue the braid I believe it but you always want to keep track of how many braids you keep between them because unless you want it to look uneven I mean some people go for that look that rustic kind of just thrown together look some people like that that's okay um, but you know otherwise you're gonna to want to just keep track of how many braids you put in between the beads and each side you definitely want to be the same size that way it that way it fits right um, so okay I've got those got my braids I'm gonna pull it a little you know kind of get it see what we're working with Whew, hoping I don't uh, run out of braid <laughs> It's looking like I say that's what I'm saying. That's why it's always better to have enough. There is always it's better to have too much than to end up running out, and not ha you know not having enough. It can be fixed, but I'd have to make a whole nother video in itself just to show you how to do that because it's it's kind of a tedious thing when you have to do it. It's not impossible and it's not super hard to do. But it is kind of difficult. It's kind of an inconvenience when you have to, because you have to add string and you have to add it in a way where you can't really tell. Because, I mean, who wants to have a spot on their bracelet that looks like they messed up? You know, that's literally what it does. It 
Looks like you messed up whenever you have to do that. But we're 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 just gonna hope for the best for now. <laughs> if uh, if I do end up having to add more, I'll just cut the video right there, finish it later, and I'll make another one on how to fix it. Simple as that. But uh, if you like my page, if you like my video, my jewelry, my art, just uh, give a like, a share subscribe if you would like if you'd like to see my future posts um any support is appreciated any likes any subscriptions just feel free to press that button um anything you'd like to see just comment let me know if i can do it i will definitely do a video of it so get this on here you just continue braiding down. Continue the braid. Uh, but yeah, this is this is very simple. It's a very simple art, a very simple thing to do. Um, I'll probably do some sewing videos at some point. Um, you know, I'll kind of show you guys what I do. I will admit I don't really have any special sewing skills. But I am pretty good at sewing with my hands. I'm, I do pretty good sewing by hand. I, I customize pants. I have about four or five pair of pants that are all customized. I take some cool fabric and I, you know, cut them down and I, you know, make them my own. Take a pair of regular blue jeans, turn them into cool jeans. <laughs> You just continue your braid on down through there. Um, you know, and you can do this with string. You can do it with thread if you wanted to. It'd be quite tedious because thread's so thin. You can do it with yarn. You can do it with, you know, I mean, pretty much anything. Anything that can be braided and worn as a necklace or anything. You can do it. It's very easy, very simple. Um, and it's fun. It's, you know, it's a good way to occupy your time, occupy your mind for a while for those who have those wandering minds. Um, keeps you out of trouble, keeps you at home. Um, if you'd like me to show you in detail how to do this again, just take a quick look. Um, take, do a loop in front of the middle. And then take the other one, go in front, behind, and through the back. And then, once again, um, you go on the opposite side and do the same exact thing. Loop it in front. Then you go in front, behind, and through the back yet again. You just continue that process on down. I've had times that uh, I ended up having just enough hemp to braid it down, which just may be one of those times. I'm hoping so. <laughs> but if not, like I said, I'll, I'll do a video, which I'll eventually do a video anyway, showing you how to fix it if you do run out. Because that can be a big pain. You got a good piece of art going and you run out and it's like, oh no, man, it's ruined. But it's not. It's not ruined. I've had a lot of nice pieces that still came out successful because I learned, I taught myself that, how to uh, how to fix one if you run out. And that was, that was a rough night. I, that was, it took some learning, definitely. But, you know, just like anything, you you know, you work at it long enough, you figure it out. Yeah, there's been a lot of times I've run out of string. Sometimes, I mean, but there's also multiple ways you can fix it, too, if you run out. Um, but like I said, it's not something I could explain. It's something I'd have to show you in depth because 
It's just one of those things, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, I'm just all about helping people out, helping people to find their craft, you know, what they enjoy doing. I mean, I believe everybody should have a hobby that they enjoy because it makes you happy. It's one of the things that really makes you feel good inside when you when you have a hobby of your own, you know, and that, that feeling when you finish something. We're almost done with this already, see? But you're always going to want to see this side and this side. You're going to want to make a match because if they don't, then it'll... It just, you know, it won't feel right. It may not look right. See, so once you get where you're short on, on your string, then you kind of starts getting a little more tedious because then you're having to work in those, those little spots. It's, yeah, it, it always makes you feel good inside to finish a piece, especially if it's for someone, if you're like me and love to give gifts, you know, it's always a good feeling to finish a masterpiece and be able to give it to someone, tell them you made it, you thought about them when you was making it, it's always a good feeling. But, okay. So now you're going to take, you know, go ahead and pull it like we do. Make sure it's all even. Tighten up them edges. And then you're going to want to do your knot there at the end. Sometimes this can be especially tedious if, you, uh, if you're running short. Because it makes it a lot harder to make your knot when you're not working with much. So, there we go. We make our knot. You're going to want to pull each and every individual one of these to make sure that each part is tight. Because sometimes there'll be a little hang up in the knot that just don't look right. Okay, you want to pull it close to the braid. And then, you will put your bead on there. You know, might have to twist it a little, whatever you gotta do to get it to go on there. Stamps are really easy to work with, it's real forgiving. Um, and then you're going to take, and honestly, however you make a knot, there's no right or wrong way to do it, to be honest. I mean, as long as it's enough to keep it on there, that's the main part. I've had people, you know, sometimes you're forced to do it a certain way because of running out, running out of hemp, running out of time. <laughs> whatever you know so yeah since I ran out I'm gonna have to just knot it like that but normally I would just make the you know the same knot like I made on the rest of it tighten it real good sometimes I use my teeth to tighten it I'm not gonna recommend that because I don't want anyone to break their teeth but you can definitely do it if it helps. Um, if you're doing this type of knot where you're just, you know, tying it, you're probably going to want to do it a few times because you want to make sure that it's not going to come loose. If you're doing it the other way, then it's probably not going to come loose anyway. So. Then you're gonna leave, you know, a good quarter inch of hang right there. Cut it off, and there you go. There you have your hemp bracelet. There is the finished product.
There we go. You know, of course, you always got to test it out. it's gonna fit and sure enough it does it goes through there and then I tried on this one may not fit me because I made it just a standard size um, there we go it may actually fit me let's see here now might be better off putting it on this hand. For some reason, I do a little better putting things on with my left hand. I'm right handed, but. Okay. Well, it barely fits me, but hey, it fits. There we go. Fits me just right, actually. So, there's our finished product. The, uh, pink and green hemp skull bracelet but i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it was helpful to you all and uh like subscribe check out my page for future updates and uh i appreciate you all watching thank you guys i'll be back soon